Hi guys, Billy back and this time we're going to be talking about the Dynamic Duo 1-6 scale collectible figure set by Saturn Toys who I not so secretly suspect is Mars Toys. Basically Mars Toys released the 66 Joker, wouldn't be beyond them to make a second company just to do these guys just so they can spread the blame across a few companies rather than it all be piled onto Mars Toys if Warner Brothers ever decided they wanted to kick their butts. This is absolutely a third party figure set. This is not licensed. And you can tell that straight away just by the lack of logos over everything. Let's just get into this and have a look at what we get. Now you see you get pretty big box. It's massive, it barely fits in my filming area. And it's got supposedly two figures in, Robin and Batman. And the picture on the front is okay. It's an old still from, the, I think the Batman movie most likely. They've done some weird Photoshop effect on it so that it looks a little bit more. I don't massively like it, but that's the way it is. And on the sides, you've just got the Saturn Toys logo. And on the back, you've got the same photo blurred out all to hell. A few warnings, the Saturn Toys logo. And that's about it, really. Let's have a look. Let's see if they've got any horrible misspellings on the back here, shall we? Oh, they've misspelled components just here. That's nice to see. I always love that. Contrived damage will not be considered as product defect and hence replacement will not be provided. Wow, that's a mouthful. I ordered mine from 16kit.com. He normally protects them very, very well. He even has like corner protectors, which is why all the corners are intact. But unfortunately, somebody probably tried to play football with this in the post office. And so you get a dent in the box. Not a big deal. Let's move on. Okay, and inside we get this slip sleeve, which I actually think is a much nicer design than the picture on the front. If they'd have just put this on the front of the box, I absolutely think that would have been a nicer, more minimalistic style that would have really added just a little bit more class to the box. It's not a big deal, but you can see what I mean. The sort of dodgy Photoshop on the front doesn't really make this stand out as a premium product. It makes it feel a little bit cheap, and I think this effect on the inside with the polka dots and everything with that sort of Andy Warhol aesthetic from the 60s really does make this look a lot nicer. So I wish they had gone with this design for the front of the box. Would have been much better. Okay, I'm just looking at everything inside the clamshell. It's quite overwhelming to look at to begin with all the hands and face plates and whatnot. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take these figures out of the box and have a look and see exactly what we get. And here they are, both out of the box. And there's a lot of things I actually really, really like about these two. It's very nice. There's a few niggling problems that I have. Some of the things with Robin aren't as good as some of the things on Batman and vice versa. But that's just the way it is. But I'm absolutely loving all the accessories you get with these guys. You get a pair of bat cuffs. You get the uh, some kind of thermos flask. I don't know if it's the bat flask or some sort of gas thing that they use can't fully remember you get two big old batarangs which are really fun to look at you get two of the bat comms you also get an absolute plethora of hands including gripping hands fisted hands and posable hands like i think you get the two peace signs so you can make batman do his bat dance that kind of thing you also get the really big famous bomb from the quite memeable scene in Batman 66 movie where he's just like some days you just can't get rid of a bomb and I also like the fact that he comes with different face plates so you can get him into these sorts of poses a little bit more and have him a little bit more convincing because Robin has a few more parts of his flesh exposed that does add a few different niggles to the actual figure itself namely the big ugly joints in the elbows what I tried to do there was try and make it as seamless as possible without going down the seamless route because that would have added cost and time to the figure. But unfortunately, it does look not as good, to be honest. And I have to say that the flesh tones in the arms partly look good, but also in certain light and certain sort of angles, it looks a little waxy. Do you know what I mean? It just looks like... Maybe maybe transparent plastic might be, but I know it's painted because you can see all the flecking in the arms and stuff, but it still looks a little bit waxy to me. The face sculpt on Robin looks pretty good. Um, I'm not 100% certain. I don't think it's fully there, but I actually do think it's a really nice convincing look. 
I'm wondering if they couldn't have had him have a bit more expression in the mouth area so he doesn't just look like a mannequin on the shelf, but that's just the way it is. Clothing wise, I absolutely love what they've done. They've got all the eyelets all the way down the front of his shirt and he's got like the bits of lace that are real and they look fantastic, it really does. This is why we come to the one six scale because of that level of detail. I like the nice big Robin logo he's got there. It doesn't look like it's gonna peel off anytime soon. And I really like all the shading they've done with the gloves. It really does add that second layer of detail that you really wanna see. And it does make all the little details like the creases absolutely stand out. The tights look good, but they also look a little bit flesh toned. And I'm not certain that was what it was supposed to be. I thought Robin's tights were a little bit more white but I'm not 100% certain on that now. But um, yeah, it did look a little bit strange and obviously you can see the really hideous knee joints underneath the tights. Not a huge massive deal, but that is something that you will need to take into account when posing this. And of course the shoes. And I do like the fact that the actual ankle pieces are sort of curled down around the edges because then you can get some ankle pivot out of him, which is something that you can't do with Batman. And I absolutely love the belt around, around his waist. It looks very screen accurate. It works really well and the gold is nicely painted. I absolutely love the cape on Robin. It works really well. It actually sits around his shoulders pretty nicely. It drapes pretty good. Overall, yeah, it's solid release actually. Now moving on to Batman. This is probably the better of the two, mostly just because it absolutely aesthetically looks a little bit more solid. The head sculpt is fantastic. It looks a little bit more like Adam West than Burt Ward looks like Robin. I really like the fact that you can swap out the faceplate so you can get some more expressions on him. The arms have double jointed elbows, so you can pose this guy a little bit more than you can say Robin, especially as you want Robin to have his hand on his hips usually, and it's a little bit difficult to do with those single jointed arms. Not impossible, but you can see how it can be a bit difficult. But there's no issue with batman there at all i like the actual body shape they've used as well i think it works really well some people have said that the bat logo is a little bit lower down on the chest than it needs to be i would probably say that's right as well yeah it probably could do with like half a centimeter higher and then it would be a lot better i really like the belt logo on the front the buckle looks nice and shiny and gold that being said, the rest of the belt is like a yellow plastic and you can see that it's just yellow plastic. It doesn't look like it's painted. It looks like you could shine a light underneath that and it would shine through that yellow plastic very quickly. I would have much preferred if I actually gone and painted it because it looks a little bit toyetic to me. Again, it's the same with the gloves as with Robin, very nicely painted, some nice detailing in them. And the boots are where it loses a little bit against Robin because there is no ankle pivot or joint in those boots so they are a little bit more fixed than say robin's feet which is a little bit of a letdown but both have a pair of shorts on and they look fantastic i think batman's shorts are a tad more loose than i would like you don't want them to look too much like a diaper and i think you might need to fight and see if you can pull those back in a little bit but the details in the head sculpt are fantastic. I really like the little curl at the top of the ears. That works really well. And the cape drapes very nicely. And I absolutely love that the cape matches the colors of the cow and the gloves. And I like the fact that Adam West's face plates do have a bit more of a five o'clock shadow. Now the bases are very, very similar to the Joker base that we got. However, they don't have name plates on. And I think that was probably because Saturn toys were being a bit more cautious with these two than they were with uh, the prank villain figure. Probably because they didn't want to get sued. That being said, they're not as good as the prank villain stand, mostly because they don't have that nameplate and they have the dynamic duo logo on the base rather than the Batman logo that the 66 Joker had, which just, I think they absolutely knocked out of the park, Mars Toys. They absolutely knocked that 66 Joker out of the park. Overall though, because you were trying to juggle two figures in a set together, that can create a whole amount of logistical problems that the 66 Joker wouldn't have. So the fact that you actually get stands that are very similar 
still look pretty nice. However, it does fall down a little bit when compared to that figure. Overall, this is a very, very nice set. Again, it's not without its flaws, but overall for the price you're paying for these, you're getting a really nice 1-6 scale collectible set for your displays. Everybody's going to walk past and they're going to go, holy crap, that's Batman and Robin from the 66 movie. I mean, just as I'm looking at them, I'm hearing like all the 60s music from the TV show in my head and all the biffs and the boofs and the pals and all that kind of stuff. It just draws that out of you. And that's what you want 1-6 scale figures to do. Are they perfect? Again, no, but they are super, super good. And if you ask me, if you didn't pick up the Hot Toys versions, these are a very good alternative to those. So overall, do I recommend it? Absolutely. I would not be surprised if they do a second batch run of this when people see how good they came out and just want these for their shelves as well. But that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you do me a favor now, if you can get the out of my cave i'm gonna go put these guys on the shelf next to prank villain and all my other batman and joker figures thanks a lot guys bye bye